church trust, but I will tell you who have assembled their church again this day. They are restored God like thee, and no God to be ever compared unto thy greatness and excellency. We worship, honor, adore, and magnify thy powerful name. We say thank you for keeping us in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are about to hear your word, O oh Lord, let your spirit lead us. We cover this message with the blood of Jesus. Christ. We cover your children worldwide with the blood of Jesus. Christ. We cover your churches worldwide with the blood of Jesus. Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The title of our message for today is The Sin of Disobedience. Amen. Amen. One more time, the title for our message for today is The Sin of Disobedience. Praise the living God. Amen. All the creatures of the living God, all that God has made, the visible creatures of God and invisible creatures of God, they obey the living God. They keep to the commandments of the living God, except mankind. Praise the living God. Amen. Every other thing that God has made normally keep to the commandments of the Most High God. But only mankind continue disobeying the voice of the living God. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind, please, and you're having your Bible, turn to me, turn with me to the book of First Samuel chapter 15. Let's start with chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 22. And he says, And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in bond offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hack him than the fat of rams. Praise the living God. Amen. As I told you earlier, every other thing that God has meant do keep to the voice of the living God. But man alone is what continues disobeying the living God from the creature, from the creation. Right from the day one that God has made everything, only man continues disobeying the voice of the living God. The sin of Adam and Eve is simply disobedience. They disobeyed. And the sins of most of the children of God, the kings of the children of God, <coughs> is the same disobedience. And the scripture is now reminding us, obedience is better than sacrifice. No matter the excuse we give to your living God, to obey that voice, to keep to the commandments of the living God is better than any other thing you will do for the living God. God does not desire anything from I and do simply to obey him. And in the case of Samuel, the Samuel and Saul, in the days of Saul, the king of Israel, and the Lord commanded him, go to the land of Amalekites, Retaliate what they have done to the children of God when they were coming out from the land of Egypt. And Saul disobeyed. And likewise today, the Christians of our generation, we keep disobeying the voice of the living God. And the most painful part of it is this. Among all what God has created, only man that God loved more than every other thing that he has made. But yet, men continue disobeying the voice of the living God. I proceed to verse 23. It says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and adoratory, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Praise the living God. And the Lord says, the sin of disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. It is abominable before the living God. And stubbornness 
is as the sin of adoratory before the living God. This is why it is important for we, if we believe that we are Christians, the children of the living God, the first thing before we can have portion in the presence of God is obedience, to keep to the commandments of God. The commandments of God have been written for so many generations, or for so many centuries or millenniums before we were being born. The preachers are not those that give this commandment to I and you, but the living God. And as we believe that we are the children of the living God, we call ourselves Christians. And the bond between we and God is to keep his word for we to live, praise the living God. Amen. Just for the benefits of I and you. And we have been suffering from so many calamities today, simply because we have disobeyed and walked away from the ways of the living God. If you don't mind and you are still having your Bible, please sit on with me to the book of Jonah, I want us to consider some of other creatures that God has met, how they kept the word of the living God. Talk with me to the book of Jonah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 10. Jonah chapter 2 and verse 10 says, And the Lord speak unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Praise the living God. Amen. As I told you, among all the creatures of the living God, only man continued disobeying the voice of the living God. Well, all fishes of the sea is one of the biggest creatures in our life. The biggest living creature is the well. But the scripture says, in Jonah chapter 1 verse 17, the Lord commanded the big fish, the great fish, Swallow Jonah. And the fish obeyed to the voice of the living God. He swallows Jonah, but he did not stop Jonah. And he commanded him to go and vomit him upon the dry land of Nineveh. And he kept exactly to the voice of the living God. He did not disobey that command. He did not stop Jonah for three days. And he vomited Jonah to the, to the location that God commanded him to go and forbid Jonah. Praise the living God. Mm -hmm. Let us still go to one of the powerful creatures of this earth today. Talk with me please if you are still having your Bible to the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 22. And it says, my God had sent his angel and had shut the lion's mouth that they have not taught me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before the O king have I done no hurt. Praise the living God. Amen. Lion is one of the most powerful creatures, the strongest, if I'm not mistaken. And in the days of Daniel, the Lord commanded the lions, don't hurt my son. And they obeyed to the voice of the living God. I want you to understand the problem of mankind today. Our problem today with God. And the problem we are struggling with in our earth is due to disobedience. We are not keeping to the commandments. We make an agreement with God. When you read from the book of Exodus and from the book of Deuteronomy, you come to understand there was an agreement between God and the children of Israel in those days. And they accepted that they will keep to the commandments of God. And God made a promise to them that he will keep them for all eternity. And the Lord further warned that from the day you start disobeying my command, all this problem will come upon you. I want you to understand how problem comes into our world. And when generations start growing, we start departing from the commandments of God. We start having wicked and unreasonable kings that start attracting the anger of God. And great problem continue coming upon the children of God. And unto this day, 
And in the book of Daniel, when Daniel was strongly accused, our God can protect us anywhere we are. Despite the powers in the nations where you are, despite the evil people in the community where you are, if you keep to the voice of God, you don't need to panic. You don't need to fear those evil communities. And that they were speaking to the voice of the living God. And when they wrongfully accused him and they threw him into the lion's den, the king was worried. The first question that the king asked Daniel in verse 20 is this Did your God, whom you depend upon, help you to save you from the powers of the lion? And verse 22, Daniel says, My God has commanded the lions. Not to hurt me. We praise that living God. Amen. When we give to the voice of God, we shall be protected. No matter where you are. No matter the evil that we befall this earth, the children of God must be protected. And the lion obey to the voice of the living God. Because God has made all things. The visible creatures was being made by the power of the living God. And the invisible creatures were being made by the power of the living God. And the whole of them continue keeping to the voice of the living God. The winter still keeps to the voice of the living God. Winter cannot leave his place and starts existing during the summer. It is not being done. And the summer maintains the voice of the living God to maintain his own time and pace on the present living God. Amen. Let us go consider one of the strongest invisible creatures as well. Still turn with me to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. And he says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. Praise the living God. Amen. As I told you, the Lord commanded the wind to chase Jonah alone. The wind did not go beyond that. The wind was disturbing the ship that did not destroy the ship. The wind did not go for any other man in that ship except Jonah. See, Jonah was being given up. Praise the living it is important for we Christians to make our life a better one. God has blessed us by having a, a special covenant and relationship with us to just kindly obey the voice of the living God and things will be well with the world. If the heresies that we are seeing today in the world, especially in Christianity, the heresies that we, see, we keep seeing, if it cannot save us from decade to decade, why not turn to wise and come to your maker? Just to keep to the voice of the living God. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind, still talk with me to see about our, to see our master Christ Jesus, his obedience when he came here on earth. Talk with me to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. And he says, and being found in fashion of and being found in, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Praise the living God. And the scripture says, When Christ came on earth, he showed us a perfect example of obedience to the word of God and humbleness. Why we have omitted obedience today in our Christianity. And the scripture says, Despite Christ Jesus came from heaven, he came on earth in the form of a man, but yet he was obedient enough to obey the heavenly voice. He was humble enough to face that death. And he was crucified. And he is laying such example for I and you. For we as the children of God to give obedience to the commandments of God in the first place. To be humble as the children of God in the first place. And let us now go to the return of 
the reward that he received from the Most High God for obeying and humbling himself unto the word of God. I proceed to verse 9. And verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Praise the living God. Amen. Because Jesus was obedient to the word of the living God. Because he kept to the ways of God. And in return, the scripture says, God highly exalted him above every other name in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, the name that will last for all eternity, simple because of obedience. How I wish that Adam and Eve would have kept to the voice of the living God. I think the situation of the world would have been better, praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind, please stay on with me to the book of Zechariah to consider the problems we have been facing with those that have been disobeying the word of God and the ways of God. Zechariah chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 3 and it says Therefore say that unto them Thus said the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, said the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, said the Lord of hosts. Praise the living God. Amen. And in the days of Zechariah, as I told you, the biggest problem have been there, have been the disobedience. And God was speaking through Zechariah. He said to his people, turn back to me, keep to my commandments. I will turn back to you. When you remember properly in the book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1, it says, the hands of God is not shutting that he cannot deliver us. His, his ears are not dull that he cannot hear us. But because of our disobedience. And in Zechariah he said, say to my people, turn back to me, keep my commandments, obey to my ways, and I will come back to you, praise the living God. Mm -hmm. And verse 4 proceeds to say, Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, and from your evil doings, but they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, said the Lord, praise the living God. As I told you, disobedience has been the problem right from creation. We have no any other problem with God except disobedience. Because after creation, shortly, God comes to realize that man is the most wicked creature among all his creations. Every other thing that God has made, God did not say that he regretted for making the fishes of the water. God did not say he regretted for making the animals of the wilderness. God did not say he regretted for creating other things, but he said he regretted for making man. That the death of man is filled with evil right from young age. Praise the living God. Mm -hmm. And Zechariah was warning them. Paul says the living God, be not like your, for your forefathers, those that rejected the ways of and commandments of God. And today, most Christians continue rejecting the ways of God. And in the ways of God is life. According to the book of Jeremiah, he says, see the ancient part, the ways of God. Walk in it for you to have life. But he says, they refuse, they will not walk in that ways. Praise the living God. I proceed to verse 5. Verse 5 says, Your fathers, we are a dead. And the prophets, they live forever. Praise the living God. Amen. Those that stand to challenge the messengers of God. The messengers of God that are being challenged, the true messengers of God that are being challenged, they will not live forever. And those that close about their deaths will not live forever as well. 
we all must surely go back to our Mecca to give accounts. But the good thing there for the messengers of God, the true messengers of God is this. Before God, they will have place for all eternity. But to those that persecuted and executed the messengers of God, they will be in horrible situation for all eternity. I bring to Christ love church the message that comes from God, pleading that this church will take the message of God. For we to live for the benefits of our young ones, not for the benefits of God. When we take the ways of God, we shall be blessed. And after when we pass away from this earth, according to verse 5 of Zechariah chapter 1, he says, the killers of the prophets will never live forever. And the prophets of God will never live forever here on earth. We all are going back home. If every man is going back home, what is the benefit of the wicked things we are doing? I faced lots of challenges last year. That I keep praying, may God help us to come back to the living God. The true children of God can never be put to shame. No matter anywhere you are, no matter what you are passing through. But those that stand as a stumbling block that the ways of God will not prosper, they will surely fail. This is why a child of God don't need to be a partaker. St. Paul encouraged us to separate yourselves from evil people. That the temple of God and the money temple has no relationship. Light and darkness has no relationship. Praise the living God. Amen. This is why it is important for we, the children of God, know your maker. Once you want to be a child of God, Know what is the commandments of your God who has made you. Walk with that commandments of God. You will never be put to shame. I was scared over the high rate of evil things I saw in this church some time ago. I was very scared. I was disturbed over those evil things. But God spoke to me. God says they cannot kill you. I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with what I was in. God says, say what I ask you to say. You shall be protected. And I condemn mm -hmm. idol worship. I see more of idol worship. Why should Christians be disturbed when we criticize gods that are not the pray God? The idols of nations, the witches, the wizards, the occultism, it is not of God. I read from my Bible, it is not from God. And God says, condemn such worship. When I condemned that worship, they intended to kill me. But God said they cannot kill me. The last year alone was five attempts. Last year alone. Using the highest God they worship in Asia. The God they worship in Asia is not God. The real God that you, a Christian, a believer, need to worship is who have made the heavens, who have made this earth, who have made the whole universe. It's the God the believers need to worship. And God said, condemn that idol that they are worshiping. Let them come out of idol worship. It is not of God. Praise the living God. Amen. Amen. And the same is so detailed. Simple message. The same disobedience was found here. They rejected that message and they plotted death once in the month of May. In the month of September twice. In the month of October. In the month of November. It is not of Christ. Christ need us back to the Obey the word of God. Follow the way of God. If the gods of nations is being rejected by the living God, the children of God need to reject it. If you don't mind, I proceed. Please turn with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 38. Jeremiah chapter 38. I'm reading from verse 19. And 
he says, And Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. Verse 20. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee, obey, I beseech thee. The voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee, so it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. Praise the Lord. In the days of King Zedekiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah says, This city must go into captivity. The only option is this, obey, submit to this city, you shall live, this city will not be destroyed. Then he said disobedience, as I told you earlier, the king disobeyed. And regardless of what you are passing through, don't disobey your God. And regardless of the condition, no matter the situation, don't disobey your God who has led you. And Zedekiah was giving excuses why he will not obey the voice of the living God. God is the Most High. And the children of God need to obey the voice of the Most High. And after a few days, when you read down, the Babylonians and the, they invaded the city of God. They captured Zedekiah. They killed all his children before him. They destroyed the entire city simply because of disobedience. The damage of disobedience to the children of God is so great. This is why God continues calling us to stop disobeying them. In the book of 1 Samuel, it says, The sin of disobedience before God is as the sin of witchcraft. Why we don't need to disobey God? Read your scripture. I'm not saying you should obey Dixon. But obey what the Lord has said to you through your scripture. Go through your scripture. Don't be offended with the message of the Most High God. Simply for you to live. Jeremiah said, obey. For you to live. And it shall be well with your soul. But he refused. And finally he was killed. Praise the Lord God. If you don't mind, let us still proceed to the book of Matthew, chapter 23, to see the warning of our Master Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter 23, I'm reading from 34, and he said, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Praise the living God. Amen. Christ knows that all this will come to pass. He knows that our generation will never obey. But the warning he is giving to those that are persecuting the true messengers of God is this. In verse 35 he says, That upon you, May come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye sleep between the temple and the altar. Praise the living God. Amen. Many have Amen. been killed. Many messengers of God have been killed because of the message of salvation. The message that we save our soul is what we reject that. And the worst part of it is not that we rejected it alone, but we tried to kill the true messengers of God. And Jesus won three these days. In verse 34, he says, I have sent my servants. God will not come down from heaven to carry out this duty. He will not come down from heaven to tell us to obey. God can never come down from heaven to do that. But God has to send those he has anointed. And so many men of God, really, we are, they, they, they have good will over the work of God. 
They want to say the truth. But because they are not strong enough, when they attack them and persecute them, they will change and start telling lies. I've seen so many men of God that went into occultism because they invoked things to them. They couldn't withstand it. They stopped saying the truth. They went into occultism. They went into evil ways. And Jesus is warning that upon this generation, when I sit down to consider what has come upon our earth today, in this year 2019 and 2018, what has come upon this, this earth, I start to reason what will happen in future <coughs> when we continue with disobeying God. In this year 2019, loss of natural disaster, what mankind cannot control, coming from heaven, coming from earth, coming from the waters, look at great amounts of earthquake. People were being killed. Property, so on and so forth. Go to the internet and see loss of natural disaster, how people are dying. It comes from the most high God. The only good thing there is this. If few messengers of God tell you the truth, what will happen before the year? And if you see that, understand the cause from the most high God. I told you from the beginning of the year, nobody can stop it. What is coming upon our heads, nobody can stop it. The only thing that can stop it is repentance. Obey the voice of God. Do what is right. And God will stop all these things that is coming upon the earth. It will never come anymore. And those, of the, those that are plotting the death of the real men of God, what is your benefit when you make someone to pass on time with you? Praise the name of God. Amen. May God help us. I'm still talking to Christ Love Church members and to the leaders of this church. God has given us great opportunity to bless our life on earth and bless our families. If we can simply listen to the voice of the living God, I'm not scared or concerned about the temples where you will take my name to. Those temples is nonsense to me. You can take my, my name to all the temples in this land or all the temples in Asia. It makes no sense. But what makes sense is for you to come back to Christ. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind, please turn with me to the book of James chapter 4. The last quotation for the day. James chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 8. And it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Our brother, brother James, is advising we all. He says, Draw near to God in the first place. God will draw near to you. If you want blessings from God, if you want protections from God, you want your family to be blessed, you want your life to be easy on earth, the scripture says, draw nearer to God and God will draw nearer to you. And in the second place, he said, clean your hands. Anything you are doing that is not of God, Clean your hand. Are you an occultic man? Come out of occultism. It is not of God. You worship God and you go to your temple in the night or to the graves in the night. It is not of God. Are you a wizard? Some of us, I found out that we have wizards and witches in this church some time ago. Any message I give to you, pray God will show this to you. One of the biggest things with witches and wizards is this. They are the greatest confusionists. They push lots of confusion. They will be attacking you, destroying you, and they will be confusing you at the same time. You may be fighting your brother next to you. There was a sister we called Fatu. And Fatu was having that similar case. And 
Fatu was at the point of death, if I'm not mistaken. She was at the point of death. Some people know her here. Some people know her here. When I prayed for her, I prayed for her, I prayed for her. She was fighting everybody in the house where she's living. Sometimes she calls me at very midnight. When I came there, I prayed. I said, your problem is not from the people here. I've never been to their country. I don't know their country where it is. But when I prayed more, I tell her I could tell you who is behind your problem. When I told her who is behind her problem, she shouted. She said that is her stepmother. She's a living witness, you can ask. People that are involved in such life, it is not of God. The message that God brings for us is the message of blessings. If we keep it to the ways of God. And Fatu was being delivered through the power of prayers. Only God can deliver you from such challenges. If you are a child of God, you are into occultism. Come out of that occultism. It is not of God. Praise the living God. That's why the scripture says, clean your hands. And finally he says, you double-minded. Don't be double-minded follower of Christ. If you want to follow Christ, you follow Christ. You want to follow your Buddhism, your Spiritism, your Occultism, your African Juju, whatsoever. You follow that very clean and clear. The scripture says, don't be double minded. Anything you want to follow, follow it, be, be free to follow it. Don't be in the church, you are in the witches, coffins, you are in the shrine, you are in the temples, you are in the different places. It is not of God. May God bless us in Jesus' name.